Hi, today I wanted to show you some of my favourite iPad apps. Now I'm not recording it directly from the iPad into my computer because QuickTime isn't playing nice today. So the first app that I want to show you, and they're not in any particular order, is Amazeograph. And Amazeograph seems to like working in landscape mode even though I've got my screen set to portrait. It makes no difference whether my screen is locked either, but there we go. These are some designs that I've done. When you want to make a new design, click on the cross and you have a lot of selections that you can choose from. Now I'm going to go for two mirror kaleidoscope, so tap on that. Now you have the usual tools, the squares on the bottom or the left, depending on which way around your iPad is, go back to your, your picture screen. And the next one along is so that you can sync whatever pen or pencil you're using. I'm using the Apple Eye Pencil. Then you have the brush, eraser, fill, color, size of brush, opacity of brush, and then you can have a slightly fuzzy brush if you want. Backwards, forwards, layers, and here is the menu for altering things. So if I go to here and adjust grid, I can adjust the number of divisions within the grid that I'm using. And if you move these, you can rotate them in different ways. And click done. So now if I draw on here, whatever I do is replicated in whatever way that the particular grid that I've set up says that it should be. Now if for example I wanted to do this design and then I wanted to do a freehand background without any replication, go back into the settings and switch off the draw with symmetry. And then I can go and I'm just going to change my colour. I can go in and I can do whatever drawing I want to do without it copying it everywhere else. When I decide I want to put the symmetry back, just do that. If I want to adjust the, the grid again, I can adjust it again and click on done. And then I can go back in with another colour and I've got my symmetry in again. There we go. So that's how that works. When you've finished with your design, you can just go to your home page and you can then go to edit and you can send it via email messages and all sorts of other things like that. So that is the first one, that is Amazeograph. Back to portrait mode, isn't it strange? The next one that I'm going to show you is like Amazeograph, but it is like Amazeograph on steroids. We have Eye Ornament. And this one instantly kind of comes alive when you go to the screen. Now it says continue with the last drawing, which I don't particularly want to do. I want to create a new one. And now if I go to the little cog, I can adjust different things. Now show symmetries enables you to see the symmetries that are put in place for you to draw with. If I go faint, you probably won't be able to see them on camera, so I'll put them on full and now you can see them. And there are different options that you can use. Now the good thing with this program is in here, under the tip section, there is a full section on how to use it and how to alter different things so you can brick your way around it. So if I click off that side for the moment and go to the brush, now you can influence your brush size, saturation, brightness, opacity, the hue. You can control it with pressure if you have an Apple Pencil or another pressure sensitive pen. And you can affect the strength and so on and so forth. On this one, you can decide what sort of line you want to draw, whether you want a solid line, a thick line, dashed line, dots line, etc. And if we go to this one, you've got the emboss feature, which is quite fun. I'll leave it off for the moment. 
for the moment. You can use sparkle and you can change all sorts of things. I'm going to get rid of this for the moment. And I've got one of the patterns selected. So I'm just going to go in here and start drawing. And as you can see, you don't have to do an awful lot in order to get a pattern. I'm going to go for that. No, I'm going to go for the pink next. So you can do all sorts of weird and wonderfuls, and you can waste hours doing this. You really can. And start again. And go for a gradient. And I want ooh, decisions, decisions. And you can see that depending on the type of stroke I'm doing, the pressure that I'm doing, I get different colours. So that's an interesting feature. That one's gone to the bin. And if I have a theme button switched on, I can get other things. Now this one looks like a sort of metallic. So you can play to your heart's content. When you have finished playing, and there are other functions that I haven't bothered to go into. But when you've finished playing, you can go back to your home screen, go to the camera button here, and you can export it in various different ways. So you can export it as a JPEG or a PNG, whatever it is it exports at. I can't remember which it was. But you can export it and you can use it in whatever else you want to use it. Now in my case, I usually use a message service to export and I just send it to my computer via a message. I just find that's easy for me, it involves me in no hassle, so that's what I do. You can also send this to its partner app and the partner app is iOrnament Crafter. And to do that, you send it to 3D Spirals and more. And this will open up iOrnament Crafter. And here we have different things that you can do. You can build a platonic solid. You can build a collider cycle. You can deform it to a spiral, make a kaleidoscope, a hyperbolic kaleidoscope, conformal maps, ooh, all sorts of things. Now a platonic solid, if I'm going to put this as a platonic solid, click the next arrow. And it has several different shapes that you can actually print out and cut with the pattern on and make the various different shapes. Like this. Great for Christmas ornaments. Okay. Now if I go back and I choose something else. Now let me see, what do I fancy? A kaleidoscope. Let's try that. And I can record it if I want to. I'm going to switch that off and you can do all sorts of weird and wonderfuls. So I'm going to go back to my other screen and deform to a spiral. Let's see what that one looks like. Wee. Ooh, look. Uh, this is just great for playing. Absolutely lovely for playing. So, there we go. So, all sorts of things that you can do with this one, and it's just great fun. Even just for the drawing part of it, it's fabulous. So, the next one that I want to show you, and I'm going to swipe that one away is concepts. Now if you're eagle-eyed you'll notice I've got one which is greyed out, this is a beta, this is the one which is actually current. Now concepts is a fabulous drawing app. It's great for all beginners, it's also great for professional artists and designers. It will allow you to do an awful lot of different things depending on how artistic you are and indeed which version you have. Now I have the Pro version which allows me to do pretty much everything that I want to do and I've had it for quite some time but they do other versions as well. The original version or the, 
the normal version of concepts is free okay so you can download it and try it out and you don't have to pay anything whatsoever you can look on the um, app platform and see all the various details about the features that it does or does not have in the basic version and the features that it has in the pro version so this is my library of images very scaled down and if I want to add another one I just tap on the plus button and I want a new drawing so I'm going to put a new drawing in and it opens up now with two fingers I can set that to rotate the correct way now you notice that this doesn't look like a standard drawing up it has this wheel here and if I tap on the color you get a Copic color wheel okay you also get a color picker so if you've got a color on your screen that you want to replicate you can use the color picker and pick it up with that now the controls are up here in the settings the little cog up here has got the settings now the workspace settings are the background the grid type the artboard size and with this app you can set it to infinity if you want it drawing scale and the units that you want to be used for the app go to the stylus now I've got the Apple pencil but you can have pencil by 53 Adonit, Wacom, Adobe Ink, Pogo Connect and here we have the finger actions now I've got enabled pressure on and enable tilt on now for finger actions so for one finger I can pan the canvas but I could have it on any of these actions that I want and a double tap I've got a whole load more actions okay so those are the actions and these are the gestures so if you have these enabled two fingers canvas rotation and canvas zoom one finger show touches while presenting or you can have it switched off so you don't show the touches while presenting tap and hold can be last used item picker the lasso color picker do nothing whatever all these various selections that you can have now the tools that are available in here if I double tap oops, on here I've got the various brushes that will come up so there's a pen a fountain pen dynamic pen which I rather like fixed width a wire soft pencil hard pencil marker watercolor and airbrush there's a fill and there's dotted lines the tool selection is selection nudge hard eraser soft eraser text and path so sorry pan <laughs> path. so you also have a brush market where you can purchase brushes and it's pretty good now to actually use it if I tap on a tool I can draw my lines like so I can adjust this tool at any time that I like up here I've got it set to 4.62 millimeters I make it wider or I can make it narrower if I select something down here on the base just down here I've got item picker if I tap that it changes to a lasso but if I change it to item picker every single item that I have drawn can be modified if I decide I want that line and that line only to be thinner then all I do is select the line width and I make it thinner if I want to copy it delete it lock it whatever I can do whatever I want to do with that line if I decide I want to change the color I can change the color of it and the thing is with this app is no matter what stage you are within your drawing you can still do that it doesn't make any difference there's a layer ability in here and if you have it set to automatic every time you choose a different type of tool for example if I was to go to airbrush after this 
uh, say that on, it comes up with a new layer that says airbrush. And if I change the color to something nice and bright so you can see it, I'm going to do my airbrushing. I can change the width of it. If I use a finger to do it instead, because the way I've got it set up, it won't do anything. Okay, I have to use my pencil for that. But I could change it so that I could use my finger if I wanted to. So those are layers and you can switch them on and off. You can copy them. You can change the order that the layers are in just by draw, dragging and dropping. So on here, we've got export. And if I want to export it, I have lots of different modes that I can choose to export it. Now, one thing that I will say, this is a vector app. But if, for example, I was to export this as an SVG, it will, for example, if I have a, let's do a, oh, whoops, not a thick enough line. If I do a really, really thick line like this, that's a thick line. The SVG, if I take a different color, and I put this right down. The SVG that's going to come out is going to be a black version like that because it doesn't give you the SVG around the shape. It gives you the SVG that the shape is based on. Now, if you want to transfer these to cut files, it really isn't that difficult. They will transfer as really, really good, clear images. You can export them as a PNG and then you can put them through your trace software as you would normally with a cutting machine anyway. So it's not a problem. I do a lot of my artwork on here and then I trace it afterwards. Um, you have a precision mode on here. It's not one I use too much because I tend not to need precision for this, but this will allow you to do various things such as have ellipses, and to draw the ellipse, you can modify the shape and the size and all the rest of it. You can do this by putting in number of variations as well if you want to. But to actually draw it, you just, oops, I need to change the color on my pen so you can see it. You would just do that around it. You don't have to follow the line, you can just go around. So if, for example, I do this, I didn't touch that line, but it drew on the line. Okay, so the precision mode is quite good. You have grids that you can put in and you have snap options. Now these are brilliant, particularly if you do want to make cut files. You can snap to key points, snap to grid, auto complete or active. Okay, so you, know, you can do your various shapes and it says, oh, you meant to finish that and it will complete the line for you. So that's really handy. You've got measuring on, so you can see that you get measurements of whatever it is that you have done. And those are the guides. Importing, you can import pictures to trace if you want to trace pictures or if you want to draw over the top of something. And you can import various library shapes that you can purchase as well. If I go to more here, we've got Marketplace for Objects. And it's just updating the library and it has various objects that you can purchase. You can purchase one pack or you can purchase multiples. And I've got my objects, doesn't have much under there at the moment. Um, back to imports, you can go from clipboard, camera, photos, files, or Adobe if you happen to have Adobe. So this is a very, very dynamic drawing app and it's great. This is just a, a quick overview. Go back to the library page and you can see it will automatically add whatever I drew last, it saved it. I can add more sections, I can name them, I can name the drawings. If I tap once on that, it will open like so. If I go back to the home page, which is just under my case there, if I hold it, 
I get duplicate or delete options coming up. So that's that one. The final one that I'm just going to mention is Procreate, a very, very well known app. And if I open up a page here, as you can see, it is different from concepts. There is no doubt about it. This one is more suitable to those people who want to use pre-imported brushes and things like that, who are doing artwork where you don't need or don't want to be able to edit individual strokes after you've made them. You can edit in Procreate, you can do your own pens and all the rest of it, or your own brushes. You can put in layers, you can do lots and lots of things in Procreate, but actually editing each individual line is not one of them. Procreate, however, has a function that Concepts doesn't, and that is masking. So if you like to draw using masking, then Procreate is probably going to be the one that you'd want to go for rather than Concepts, which doesn't have masks yet. Don't have any plans to, but it doesn't yet. So there we go. Those are my favourite apps. I hope you've managed to last down to the end. And I'm sorry I can't record this directly, but at the moment it's just not working. Take care now. Bye bye.